If you clicked on this video, that means that there's some card that you wish you had in the simulator Assetto Corsa, whether it's your car, a car that you plan on building, or just a dream car of yours. So I'm going to show you how you can make that dream a reality by bringing that car into Assetto Corsa. So I have my G37 here that I've designed over years and years, and I also have a part-time job now where I design many, many cars for an upcoming platform of Assetto Corsa, which I can't talk about yet, but I'll be able to announce that pretty soon. So the first thing you're going to need if you want to start modeling your own car in Assetto Corsa is Content Manager. And I'm assuming that you probably already have this if you use Assetto Corsa. That's this window right here. Now the next thing you have to do is go into the About tab. You're going to click this version over here like 10 times really fast so you can enable developer mode for Content Manager. This is going to allow you to start modifying the cars. Now the next thing you need to do is find a car that you're going to base yours off of so you have a good starting point. It's really hard to make a car from the ground up. So I'm going to use the example of somebody that's trying to make a modified version of the Toyota GT86 like their real life car. Now the first thing you want to do here is go down to where it says unpack data. What this is going to do is take the data file of the car which controls all the physics and turn it into this folder where you have all these different text files and you're able to edit them, change any values of the car and once you change the values you're going to go back over here and click pack data and that's going to turn all those text files back into the proper data file for the car. But we don't want to modify the original version of this car because you don't want to ruin the default Kunos car. So what you're going to do now is after you unpack the data, click on folder, go back one to where you get your entire car folder right here, click control C and control V, just copy it, and rename it to something, um, I would say get rid of the dash, add an underscore. I'm going to call it tuned for now. Just make sure you don't use any capital letters or the car will not be able to be used online. So now if you exit out of that, you're going to see a new car in your content manager cars list with the green dot. Click on that and real quick, just go in here and name it whatever you want. It can be capital letters this time. I'm going to call it tuned. So now we have an exact copy of this car. Um, if you open up the folder, you're going to have the folder version of the data folder uh, and the file version. So now what we can do is start messing with the data folder. And there's a lot of different text files here. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm going to break it down to show you where to start. The first thing you should probably start with is the car file. This is where you're going to name the car the way it shows up in the game. So once again, you're going to change the name here to tuned. I know we've changed the name three times now. And then whenever you make a change to any of these files, you're going to go file save. So also in this car file, we have some other important things like how much fuel your car can hold. Uh, keep in mind, all the values for this game are in metric units, so fuel is in liters, not gallons. Sorry to those of you in America. Um, you're going to have to do a lot of unit conversions. And then same thing here. This is the total mass of the car. This is going to be how much the car weighs with the driver inside and no fuel. So this is a completely dry weight of the car in kilograms, including the driver. Now, Kunos always assumes a 75 kilogram driver, but if this is your car, what you're going to do is find the exact weight of the car with no fuel, and then add however much you weigh to this total mass. Then you just put the value right here. I'm going to say we took 50 kilograms out of the car, and I'm also going to say that I weigh about 10 kilograms less than 75. Let's say I weigh 65 kilograms. So now we have the weight at 1225. And we're going to hit File, Save. We took some weight out of the rear, not the front. So now we want to go into our suspensions file right here where you have the weight distribution of your car. Now you can calculate this or get your car corner balance to find out exactly what the weight distribution is. But what we're going to do here is say that we threw off the weight balance just by a little bit and we're going to change this to 0 0.585. So that's how much percent of the weight is in the front of the car. So 58.5% weight in the front. Then we hit save. We also added a new front sway bar which the manufacturer of this sway bar claims to be about 50% stiffer than stock. So we want to take this 39,000 right here. I'm going to use Google Sheets and multiply it by 1.5. And we have 58,500. We're going to put that right here. Now I like to use Google Sheets to do a lot of the math when I design cars. You're going to have to do a lot of math, so it's good to stay organized and I'll usually make a whole sheets file for each car and then add different sheets depending on which section of the car I'm working on. 
This is going to be our working car for all these tutorial videos, so I want to keep things organized. We have our suspension page, and we have sway bars, our front sway bars that we're tuning with the stock and tuned versions right here. So now we have a stiffer front sway bar. Then inside the suspension tab, you can modify all these different things, such as your spring rates, your damping rates, which this would take an entire video to cover all this. It gets a little bit complicated. Um, you have your front section up here, your rear section down here. Um, never change the base Y of your car. If you want to change the height of your car, what you're going to do is change rod length. Basically the length of your suspension strut. We're not going to change the suspension rates for now, but we're going to say that we lowered this car by 30 millimeters. So remember, all these units are metric. This is meters. If I want to change it by 30 millimeters, we change it by 0 0.03. So 1.2, uh, 0.125. And then same thing down here. We're going to go 30 millimeters shorter, and we're going to hit save. Now keep in mind, when you change the height of your car, that's going to throw off the alignment. Same thing that happens in real life. So make sure you have enough adjustment range. What we're going to do now to make up for that is go into the setup tab. The setup tab is where you have all the different tunable factors of your car like you see in the pits. So what I want to be able to do for this car is get a larger range of camber in the front and rear. So the minimum we're going to go negative 2, maximum we're going to go 2. And we're going to change that for both fronts. And then for rears, we're just going to go larger as well. Now we made a couple changes to the car. What I want to do is pack the car up and drive it in the game and see how it looks. So what we're going to do is hit pack data. It's going to take those data folders and turn it into a data file. Now go to drive, find the car. And we're going to have some issues with the car. This came from copying and pasting the file. It's telling us that the sound bank is wrong and the weight is wrong. So let's go back to the car. We're going to replace the sound with the GT86 sound. I don't know why the sound always gets messed up when you do this, but just go ahead and replace the sound. And then the other thing is that it's telling us if we hit analyze, the weight in the UI of Content Manager is not lining up with the weight in the data file which is correct because you did not change the weight here. We only changed the weight in the data file. So it's asking us, do you want to fix the data or fix the UI? We want to fix the UI. We don't want to change the data. So now the weight right here is going to reflect the weight change that you made in the data file. So now we have no more issues with the car. Go to drive, um, select the car, and then I like to always test things out on the drag strip because the drag strip is a really flat surface that you can use to see what your camber is and all that. And I usually use this surface to tune my car. So let's hit go and we can see our car. Hit F7 and you can, and you can uh, fly around the car. Now we can see that the car was lowered, but something looks off. It looks like the body of the car is too far forward over the wheels. This is because we changed the weight distribution of the car and it moved the body forward. I know that's not how it works in real life, but that's how it works in the game. So I'm going to show you guys how to change that. But if you can see, the car is now lowered. It's definitely a bit lower than stock. And let's look at the settings here. We now have a much larger range of camber adjustment. So I'm going to set the camber how I like it. So now what we have to do to adjust the visual difference of the car being shifted forward is we're going to go back into the data folder, go into the car file, and you're going to see this graphics offset right here. Now we want to change Z because Z is front to back of the car. And it's hard to tell if negative is back or forward. So we're just going to change it by a little bit and then see how it affects the car. Remember, after you do anything, you have to pack the data. Then go back into the game. Press F7 so you can use a free camera. And it looks like that fixed it. Now we can fine tune this a bit if we want. It looks like going more negative brought the chassis more back. So I'll probably add a little bit more, maybe go 0.65. But yeah, I mean, this is the basics of how to lower the car and adjust the offset. So we can use this car as our test car for going over any tuning tutorials. 
Let me know if you guys have anything specific that you want me to go over. And please let me know if you're actually interested in this because I don't need to be making these videos. I'm only doing it because I had a lot of requests for it. So if you can like the video, bookmark it, comment, whatever, um, that shows me that you guys actually want to see this and that'll encourage me to make more videos on this.